Hey everybody, it's Infinite Dice. Uh, recording post audio. Um, normally I record my audio while I'm playing. Uh, however, uh, during the entire time I was making this video uh, in sections, uh, I didn't notice that my voice uh, wasn't recording. Um, at the same time, so uh, unfortunately I lost everything I had been talking about, and uh, I'll try to interpret as best I can uh, as we watch it. So um, here I have a heavy cargo plane that I, I put together using B9 parts, and um, as you can see right there, um, I put a couple of my aircraft docking ports that I made for the aircraft carrier inside of it, and uh, I docked up a few uh, ground vehicles uh, in, in the hopes to make a forward operating base um, uh, somewhere further out, uh, away from the KSC. So I flew about, I think this is roughly 120 kilometers or so, uh, and um, I found a nice little spot, uh, not an ideal spot, but something that was interesting, uh, interesting enough to uh, prompt me to land. So I, I chose a spot and uh, I, I put down, and uh, let's just see what happens here. Now, now more on the aircraft. Um, the B9 parts have uh, a Mark IV fuselage, and I believe that's what I'm using here. Uh, I had to scale it up a little bit, which was a little bit of a pain. Um, they all didn't scale quite. Uh, s symmetrically, but um, uh, after scaling them uh, to the proper size, I didn't need to scale the wings, uh, I just scaled the fuselage. Uh, as you can see, the tail surface is not anywhere near big enough um, for what a real plane would need, but uh, this is uh, this thing flies really well, um, it gets great uh, fuel mileage, and um, uh, or, you know, fuel economy for, you know, to stay uh, uh, measurement uh, system neutral. Uh, um, so, uh, this is the landing here. Uh, as you can see, I drop it down. I have double sets of wheels uh, just for um, endurance purposes. I found that sometimes in a landing on terrain I was losing wheels so I doubled everything up. I put we I put wheels, uh, um, fire spitter wheels, and this is my first mistake <laughs> as you all notice. Um, I put fire spitter wheels as you can see towards the end of the wings so that just in case it tipped uh, it wouldn't tip right over or, t or damage the wing. Um, as you can see I lost the tail surface there at the top um, when I was backing up, I hit the back of the uh, the cargo bay so hard, I guess, that it actually knocked the top off. And then backing out with my second air defense gun, I did the exact same thing. So when you're landing on terrain, a good bit of advice is to try to find the, the, the flattest terrain possible. Even though you can land there, it doesn't mean you can back your vessel, your, your vehicles out safely. Um, Wheels, like uh, especially stock wheels, on top of other parts are very slippery. They're almost like glass uh, or ice on ice. Um, so, so backing out, you need a very level surface, and then you're relatively safe. So after trashing this plane, I decided, hey, you know what? I'm not just going to leave it. I'm going to fly it back to base. It was a pain to get this uh, to fly properly over, I think, 3,000 meters. Uh, it was uh, not. Uh, keeping a straight line. It was just tail. It was the tail was just hunting all over the place. It, it was very difficult to fly. So down below 2,000 meters, it was a lot more controllable. Of course, uh, the air density is thicker, uh, more dense. Um, so here I've launched a modified version of the plane. Um, I removed a few things. I added a couple more struts to the actual tail surface to strengthen that. Um, and as you see, those wing uh, wheels. Sometimes you, you hit the brakes too hard or something, and those wing wheels really, uh, really help keep that wing off the uh, off the grass. Okay, so I decided uh, I'm going to load up another batch of vessel uh, vehicles and uh, fly them out to the site. 
So you can see here that the, uh, uh, the I'm loading a tank first. The reason being, I, I brought the mobile repair station out first and then realized um, I want a heavier vehicle towards the front, uh, towards the center of the aircraft as much as possible. So what I did was I just kept the other one outside and now I brought that one in. And as you can see, I'm, I'm docking them. Um, with the carrier docking um, parts, it's very easy to do. With stock docking parts, it's really hard to do. I'm sure there's other mod you know, solutions out there, but I like this solution. Um, pretty easy and very, uh, you know, very part minimal. Um, so two docking parts, don't have to worry about putting, you know, a whole ton of other parts in there to, to get it to work, and it works really well. Here I'm doing an airdrop with the mobile repair station. I put eight radial parachutes on it, on the top of it, and I quick linked them to, I think, the three key. So my plan was just to fly straight with SAS on and uh, hit the three key with the nose up a little bit on the plane and there it goes out the back so you can see it falling down uh, it worked perfectly it worked flawlessly uh, then I tried to bring the, the uh, transport plane in for a landing and I clipped the belly on some rough terrain because it was at night time and I couldn't see uh, so the whole plane just fragmented and fell to pieces I switched back to <laughs> my mobile repair rig and as you can see that that was that survived and it's still coming down six meters per second it was just a beautiful landing too so I was super happy with this even though I lost my uh, my aircraft toss the brakes on now I head back over to the plane just to uh, see what's going on with uh, with the aircraft and uh, with my cargo lo and behold <laughs> There's my tank. My tank is in is still connected and not damaged. Isn't that amazing? So I I started I let it roll down the hill. I was hoping it would it would level out and it did. So I just gave it a little bit of time to you know I waited a little bit of time here to uh, see what would happen. I disconnected it right at the right moment and then backed it out. And before it could roll back, I actually made it onto the ground. So that was like the highlight, uh, you know, saved uh, the tank. And then of course, uh, from the first part of the video when uh, I backed those other units out, I, I ditch, I, I, I dumped them uh, on their sides. So uh, I used the tank, bar uh, the gun barrel to actually knock them over so that they were in uh, upright position. On one of the uh, closing weapon system, uh, mobile closing weapon systems, uh, one wheel had not been knocked off. That was the only damage that was suffered to uh, any of those vehicles. This is the mobile repair station, and these are come in handy because they ha they hold some of that uh, um, spare parts resource. Uh, and plus, they look kind of neat. They're like a little, you know, base. Um, I put a solar panel on the side, I put a battery pack, uh, there's a turret, an air defense turret on the top, a light, a light one, um, just to add a little bit more defense against air attack. So, so building a forward operating base, um, my goal here was to first lay down, uh, you know, set down a few air defense guns, uh, heavy air defense guns, uh, that would keep enemy aircraft from coming around. Uh, then, uh, of course, came the repair station and the and the main battle tank for ground, uh, you know, for ground reinforcement. Um, and then now, finally, I'm bringing in one of my own aircraft to land here, uh, so I could do my own uh, counter attacks. Um, now that it's safe from enemy air attack, uh, bring in my ground, uh, bring in my aircraft. So here's a, just a quick landing showing uh, the. Um, this aircraft. So this is a very light aircraft. It's very small. It's a carrier plane that I developed, uh, that I put, to, that I slapped together over the course of, uh, uh, you know, building my aircraft carrier parts. It lands on carriers perfectly, so uh, it's very versatile in landing in, in most uh, very short distance kind of uh, locations like this. Um, it only carries a few bomb. It has a few hard points for bombs. Has a few hard points for rockets on the outside wings. Um, 
the tank I I put this this version of the tank doesn't have a ladder on the side so what I had to do uh, in the crash uh, the there, there's a Kerbal seat inside the main body of the tank and normally I use that Kerbal seat to actually load a guy into the tank and then when you when you get the guy out of the tank he goes up above the tank so this here is just showing you uh, most people I don't know if anybody's realized that the tank has an actual camera position uh, but that's it. So just double click on that black box. Thanks for watching, guys. Again, hope you enjoy it.